Hello. My name is Sania Venagopal, and I'm an associate professor in the Division of Cardiovascular Medicine, Department of Internal Medicine. I spend a lot of time teaching medical students as well as residents and fellows. And today I'd like to talk to you about integrating and transforming medical education through simulation. Presently, when we look at the medical school curriculum, we know that it emphasizes a lot of knowledge and skill. There's lacks of emphasis on critical thinking and judgment and decision making as well as teamwork. The current medical school curriculum also really focuses on siloing basic science and clinical knowledge. And in many cases, we lack the integration of those two entities. Medical school currently also relies more on lecture-based teaching methods, which we know that in our current practice that students really don't appreciate as much. And to the most part, it's not as appealing to the digital natives. So how can we address this challenge? One of the things that we're considering here at UC Davis is the use of simulation and technology as a tool. We used to say when we teach our students as well as our residents and house staff that we would talk about a model where we see one, do one, and teach one, and subsequently changing that model to seeing many, practicing many, and then subsequently doing just one. We know that there is an evolution in the way of medical school teaching today. Primarily, we used to have a lot of lecture-based education. We know that the lecture-based educations were limited in terms of student interactions, as well as attention. We subsequently evolved to more of a clerkship model, where students are actually having more interactions with patients one-on-one -on -one in the clinical setting. And now I think that it's fair to say that we're evolving more into standardized patients, as well as mannequin-based simulation, and subsequently more of a virtual model, where students can have interactions with multiple learners, as well as uh, simulators. If we talk about simulation presently, simulation instructions have been shown to enhance learning and skill acquisitions. Few of our medical schools are using simulation to its full potential. This is an example of the American Board of Internal Medicine's competency on patient care. And I'd like to highlight under these competencies that the use of simulation as well as critical thinking and clinical reasoning skills are key. Currently, what we are trying to do here at UC Davis is a pilot program where we introduce simulation-based curriculum out of the gate, day one of medical school. Our goals are to enhance paper-based learning and case presentation with a simulated environment. We are trying to improve clinical reasoning and critical thinking skills of our learners, and we're starting quite early. The purpose of this pilot program is to augment standardized patient exercise and then subsequently provide a virtual environment for our learners to practice communication as well as empathy. There are several different types of modalities and, and fidelity that we can use when it regards to our simulators. Some of the low fidelity models are patient actors, written problems, simulated interviews. We also have some task trainers such as an intubation mannequin, spinal and epidural trainers, CVP insertion, and finally the use of high fidelity mannequins such as the sim man or virtual reality. We're currently using all of these simulators in our center today and primarily also focus on the use of high fidelity mannequins to help promote clinical reasoning and critical thinking skills in our students. This is just an example of what we were trying to do here. These are students who are involved in their doctoring one rotation, which involves interviewing and history taking skills. What we've been doing is pairing these students up with a master clinician educator who runs through a simulation based scenario with each of these students. The goal here is to allow students to enhance their communication skills as well as their critical thinking skills skills in a more one-on-one -on -one manner. We know that at the end of the day, when it comes to what we need our students to know, there are some basic facts. Number one, feedback is the most important. And in situations where we're allowed to use the simulator to give the most appropriate feedback necessary for our early learners. Repetitive practice, range of difficulty. Our goal is to have a progressive nature in regards to the difficulty of our learners. Simulation also provides our learners to have multiple learning strategies over over a course of a year, two years, all the way out to four years in a given curriculum. There's multiple opportunities for clinical variation. More importantly, this is also a very safe and controlled environment for our learners. We can also individualize the learning and use simulation to not only assess our learners early on, but to also provide progressive assessment as they go through their four years of training. We can also define some outcomes and benchmarks. And as mentioned before, we can use our simulators to provide more realism and validity. And at the end of the day, 
our primary goal is to include curricular integration through the preclinical and clinical years. So in summary, simulation has been playing a very important role in medical education today. And I think that we'll probably see more the use of simulation across the curriculum. Thank you for your time.